so how, wait a minute how, how do you walk out and tell the beautiful people who make this show possible and you just confuse the shit out of them and be like yeah give us money listen we don't Ta-da. have enough budget to make yes. sense And welcome back to the Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. We're back. We're in one place. We're not going stir crazy. Not completely stir crazy. Maybe not just yet. Anyway, I'm Vince Stone. That's Jordan Swing. That's Pedro Mateus. And you at home, Shotroom Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. But back to it, man. Um, what's the weirdest thing that you've done stuck at home this week, uh, Pedro? Well, let's see. Um, I was crawling under my desk trying to figure out exactly why my UHD monitor went dead. Mm. Turns out um, Display Port 2 <laughs> on the GTX 1080 uh, decided, you know what? Uh, screw you and the high horse you rode in on. Uh, I'm just going to die now. And die it did. <laughs> We were talking earlier, um, about, I, I've never had one, but Jordan, you've known a person. I mean, I've worked IT, right? Like, yeah. you, you get like dead display ports or like dead um, dead HDMI ports. And I've, I have a friend who like had one die on them. It's, it's just, a, it's a thing that happens occasionally mm-hmm. and you can't predict it. And you're like, well, what the fuck, right? Like, yep. What, <laughs> what, what, what sucks is if like... That was like the only one of those ports you had on your video card, and now you have right. to go buy another cable. One of the things I like... brought up to Pedro is like, <laughs> it's a good thing we live in this future. We're like, I'll just use one of the other ports on the card, right? Yeah, it has three, so I can <laughs> I can swap it around. <laughs> oh, oh, man, could you imagine this was back in the day when like your only other output was like an S-Video out? <laughs> I have those cards, man. I have those. Right. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Do you remember like the moon future? I remember the first time I got like a dual DVI card. I was like, oh, but, Ooh, but it, two it was, monitors. A, no, th- that was the thing though. It was a ridiculous luxury because I couldn't afford two flat panel screens. I could barely afford this one. And yeah, weird, weird times. Have you done anything weird being stuck in your um, captivity? No, I'm like maybe three quarters of the way to go in like full Jack Torrance. Oh, okay. Just, T- type in front of a typewriter all work and no play makes homer <laughs> something something uh but yeah no i I've, I've i've been dabbling with the joys of dog ownership i stepped in I, I i got up to i got up to go to the bathroom this morning i missed it on the way out uh-huh. but on the way back to the bed dog poop right on the floor shoes no like, shoes i mean n- no shoes oh toes yeah, so that, so then that's that's hopping on one foot back to the bathroom and spending twenty minutes cleaning off mush dog shit off my foot. Think about it this way: at least you didn't wake up after a fifteen minute nap going. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> what what what's that smell on my chest? Oh, even worse, man. Uh, over here, none. Uh, I we I got a thing. It, this thing. It allows me Spins? to. Eh, not really. It was really cheap, but I'll be talking about it more later. It's just a additional control surface. So, because I'm trying to do this, it keeps me from having to stop doing another thing over here. So I can just reach over and touch and do that. But it is making me run a newer version of a door that is completely not ready for production. Hi, from production. We're using it right now. <laughs> so. That's the best place to test your code, right? There's that. Also, that's where I, all the bugs are. I had. I had my old man moment. I, I've already told both of you about this. Just like wake on land. It's a bit of a thing. I haven't had any reason to have wake on land in my life, even in my house or anything. I haven't even thought about it in like a decade until I was like, wait a minute. I got to get this with like Jackbox, which is way over there now. And it's around and walking all the way around this desk and all the way back. That gets tired around the 16th reboot you're doing in 30 minutes. So set it up. I was surprised. Good on you, MSI, this cheap B350 motherboard. Oh, it's got that supported. Boom, put it in there. Doop, doop. Okay, can I send you a magic packet? Oh, I can do it from desktop terminal, not a problem. It's like, had never thought of this, but I was like, I bet you could do this through an Android. I went to the Android store, naive. Like, I wonder if someone else has thought of, oh, yeah, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> There's the 900 of them. And I was like, what color do you want it? It's like, geez, all right, fine. And, um, didn't even have the fun one. It's like dragged down to discover your network because you know, I already getting ready to punch in the MAC address if this was going to work, this crazy moon technology, and just found it. And I hit it and it cut on. I was like, yay. So, yeah. Yay, ARP. Yeah, that <laughs> happened. 
But uh, you just can't automatically cut on the horse with a touch of a button. I mean, scientists have dreamed of one day doing so. Ooh, but advanced that, that, technology. But that is that is in the far distant future. That's advanced technology. It's the Stein Linux update oh, of the like. Like of the like. All right, check it out. Technology. Yeah. Uh, so Valve uh, put together a little uh, little news post. Um, Trying desperately to keep developers on Steam <laughs> and not going to other stores. It's like, hey guys, successful games are actually making more money in 2019 than in 2018 because of the changes we implemented. Um, they give you a lot of data, and I, tr I tried going through it, but my eyes kind of rolled over in the back of my head. But they, they're, they're nice enough to give you a TLDR. Um, successful games are earning more money, but unsuccessful games are earning less money. And that's yep. that's sort of the rub. That is kind of it, man. One of the things that struck me is like 80% of the Steam games have earned under $5,000 in their first two weeks. But doesn't that kind of roll back to just the idea of, okay, if, I, if I'd if i spent like the last two years of my life and I was like mortgaged to the hilt with loans and that's all I got versus like, hey, it's something that's made in my spare time. Oh, look, five grand. Neat. Yeah. There's two different ways of <laughs> that, looking at that. Yeah. I I mean, dis discoverability has been one of those things that Valve has been like fighting to figure out some kind of solution for because they 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 mention it in the in the news post like we made a decision to make the Steam store public. There's no curation, blah blah blah, because we want to hand it off to curators and influencers and so on and so forth. But the the problem there is like, well, how do you how do you get your game in front of people? Um, and with with the with the with the sheer volume of games being put on Steam, how how do you do that? So Valve doesn't have a solution, but what they can tell you is <laughs> if you if your game does succeed on Steam, you will make slightly more money. That's that's it. Yeah, that's definitely true, man. Uh, it's just what was the uh, what was it Steam Spy that had the uh, all the pricing data and all that other fun stuff? Yeah, that yeah. yeah. The that that epic pulled and they're like hey remember that website yeah we've been funding that secretly for like two years so oh, yeah that's the and uh com as a companion to this article look up the um ars technica article where they basically from the data that valve uh shared with this article they sort of extrapolate a couple of other things it's very interesting Mm. Very Extrapo interesting indeed. Extrapolation, you say? Well, it's better than yes. the extrapolation. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. Not on this show. Not not not, not this close to lag day. I think I think we're worse off for it, though. Amen. Yes. Artifacts. But back hey, Oregon. maybe you'd like to go back to artifacts. Yep. I don't know why you would, but apparently a lot of people did. Like two, uh, five hundred and twenty-five of them on average uh, over the past month. I don't know. Which uh, wait, is hang a on, hang on. What's that? Oh, wow. Okay. I wouldn't brag about that. Uh, just looking at this is uh, from PC Games and mm -hmm. all this in our show notes. Artifacts saw a peak of 535 concurrent players. Man, uh, yep. I'd brag about that <laughs> if it was like tomato I clicker don't... or horse clicker. Yeah, if made. it was like yeah. a teeny tiny little I, indie game, yeah. not a Valve game. <laughs> well, that's the thing. This this isn't Valve bragging about it. This is PC Games and covering it because they've been watching Steam charts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but but yeah, like I don't I don't I don't know. Valve did say we we covered it last week. They're trickling out the changes, so maybe some people are getting them already. And like that's the I don't thing. Know. They're not trickling them out yet. They're still working on the boring stuff. That's what they said. And I, well, yeah, and I mean, who who knows? Like, maybe, maybe there are people who actually really like the game, but were turned off by having to pay money for cards. I, I honestly, I think, like, we're, we're going to get our answer once the free version comes out to see how well it actually does. I don't, I don't think it's going to do particularly well because that ship has sailed already, but. When you say that, Jordan, um, do, do you think I'm right in saying, like, the whole card game genre is done, it's baked, it's sailed as a whole? Like, there's not really any. It's it's the equivalent of coming out with a new MMO. I'm like, eh. Uh, so I I I would say like at least in at least in the physical space, like TGCs are dominated by Yu Gi Oh and like Magic the Gathering, right? Um, yeah. On on online, it's still Magic the Gathering because of MTG Arena. They're doing a good job with that. And MTG Hearth Arena and, and Hearthstone. Hearthstone and Hearthstone, yeah. <laughs> so it, it it's one of those things where like. 
Microsoft comes in. I have a mobile OS too, you guys. Like the the, ma the major players have established themselves, and you got to do something really, really crazy to get people's attention at this point. Kudos. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's like it's like wow, uh, MMOs and wow, right? If you're inevitably going to be compared to that. Well, when you say like Windows, I, I just want to give a side check. A little bit of a shout out because I watched like the um, development log on OBS. That dude maintaining RT. He's still up to it, man. Windows RT. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess if you got like an RT tablet and you want to use it as like a slider or something, I, maybe? I, I, I want one now because those things existed for what, 30, 35 seconds? They're like, you can buy the Surface RTs for reasonably cheap on eBay, actually. I, I, yeah, I, I guess like the supply level, Microsoft expected it to <laughs> ship more units. So it's not like a super rare piece of kit. There's just a bunch of new in box ones. Well, it's like my yeah. Black, yeah, I have the Blackberry tablet that runs like QNX. And X. I'm like, ah, that's neat. And I. <laughs> Team Black Music, oops, or bad, whatever. Oh, speaking of hardware, man, check this out. A new patent <gasps> has been published from Valve of a Steam controller with swappable components. That's right, it's got interchangeable bits that you can lose, just like that new Xbox controller that's like $200. What we're looking at is effectively what you would imagine with a Steam controller. It's got two areolas on it. It's got, the, and I like looked at the Peyton, it's like, are the buttons bigger? No, they look roughly the same as the ones I have right now. And you still have your D-pad, but the D-pad has, there's an image below that for your standard, you know, four-way D-pad or, you know, just your analog bit. And that, that's really it. Am I missing anything? Well, uh, what, what, what? What I, what I find interesting was this was what the, the, the Smock kind of pitched originally was like mm -hmm. the the swappable face buttons, which I thought, which I actually thought was a good idea, because like if you're gonna if you're gonna have a controller that's supposed to be an open platform, it would be nice to be able to like but make the, it work like the controller you want. But the Smashy did it with the Areola controllers. Yeah, I guess this is yes. This this is just a patent for uh, for the for the analog stick D pad, but there could be more incoming. I don't I don't know. Like that, that, it, it seems like if you're gonna introduce one modular part for your controller. That seems oddly specific. But, yeah. Well, introduce all the modulars, please. <laughs> well, hang on. I, I mean, if you have your Steam controller, it, think about like that as your standard cross yeah. pad. That that would be that big. It'd be like only six inches. Yeah, they could make it so it overlaps the uh, little plastic thingy. Yes, yes, Steve, you, yes, it. Pedro. They could make it look dumber. Um. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, uh, you're talking about a controller with two areolas on it. You, you're <laughs> talking about it being dumber. <laughs> you, no, no, no. You leave my TV remote out of this. <laughs> now, I, 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 I got, I got to be the fun police about this. But of course, it's just a patent. They may just be putting this down so that, like, yeah, we have the rights to this. Go fuck yourself. Also, I mean, how do you, how do you even get a patent on? Um, I don't know. Good well, luck you, with you, it. You, you could get a patent on rounded edges. Apple oh, did it, so there is this. So, yeah. This is true. The but, slide to unlock. <laughs> yeah. Memory fix. Yeah. Um. For the two of you who bought <laughs> Alex and are playing it via Proton on your index, lo and behold, Valve's Valve still got your back, man. They do, man. Uh, yeah. There, appar apparently, a couple people are trying. Uh, apparently, one of the two people has a GTX 970. <laughs> they were running out of memory. <laughs> So, uh, so now, now, uh, Alex is a little better about memory management on Proton and you know what? I bet you that probably trickles over to windows too. And you know what? Lowering memory profile requirements. It's just a good optimization for most games period. So mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of want to take the Pepsi challenge on this because as much, I don't even like, I, I've already said it. So I've already whispered it into being. What if they just stick, they're working on this because they're, yeah, it's going to have a Letix version, but it's also going to be Proton. Maybe. I don't know. You know Official um, Proton. Yes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we're, we're refining the pipeline because we want to onboard more VR games May and Linux, and this is a good way for us to learn how to do that and make the tools. Well, that that's that's what I was gonna say. Like, may, maybe this isn't so much for Alex specifically. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is just like VR support in general. Because, like, like you said, we we want to be able to onboard more people. That means making sure that Proton can run these VR games as good as it possibly can. Right. Hmm. Still, uh, I don't know. How much do like the original vibes go for now? Are they still ridiculously cheap? They didn't make enough to where they're just like. 
I I could I couldn't tell you. I haven't looked up the price of one of those <laughs> since it came out. I I want to play Alex, man, but I want to play Alex when I find like a, a vibe a full kit of vibe for like ten bucks. No, what, what we got to do is we got to like set up a corner of your house mm -hmm. to, and like get some yellow tape to make it look like the hollow deck and just have you like walk into a wall at some point. Dude, I have, <laughs> I, I have a dining room with nothing in it. So you're going to, you're going to set up the hollow shed. You should do it. <laughs> if we can, we get it up and then, uh, yes, never winter nights. That's something Pedro likes. It is. Uh, and build 8193.10 is now uh, available if you're tracking the development branch. I am. Uh, and um, it's always fun to see like the new stuff that uh, Beamdog has managed to find in the old engine and that they can improve now. Uh, this one, it fixes uh, a bunch of um, like the post-processing effects that they introduced with the uh, enhanced edition, like a super sampled uh, ambient occlusion. That's uh, the accuracy and the performance on that have been improved. Uh, dynamic contrast, same old, same old. Depth of field, they've um, also changed uh, the configuration that you can set in the config files to be a bit more granular. Uh, the visual effects uh, that you can place with the tool set, uh, those, uh, once you render out, once you build the module and you are playing it in-game, those effects are now subject to the same level of uh, post-processing that you have enabled for everything else. And the one that jumped out at me was actually double-kicking a player. If you, like, booted a player and then you boot it again before the, like, little instance timed out, the server... It doesn't anymore, so they fixed that. What? What just what? happened? We had a little glitch. Yeah, okay. That was, I thought that was on my end. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Pe Pedro, are you still jacked into the Matrix? <laughs> are you getting turned into an Agent Smith? No. <laughs> are you matrix. sure? Are you uh. sure, Mr. Anderson? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the, 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 the other thing that did come with this update is they added a bunch of the scripts for the uh, premium modules. So if you want to use those as a base for your own mod... Now you can. That's neat. Uh, I, I really wish. I, do you ever find any games like that? You look at it. You can look at it from the outside. Like, oh, I get it. That looks. It's just not for me, though, man. I just. I, I can't extract any joy from it. That's me with most racing games. Oh, speaking of racing games, good news, everyone. <laughs> yeah, grip. Wait, are we talking about grip or grid? Gr no, this is this, this grid. is grid. Ah, okay, man. Where am I in the Gurp, show? Now? Gurp. The Gurp. I, I, I don't know. I think you wrote that. I, I don't. I don't know. Sometimes we just mess with each other in like the the article headings, and I don't even know anymore. Okay. It, I always saw that story. It said grip, but it was about grid. Grid twenty nineteen. Uh, this is you know you love them code weavers, right, man? And uh, we code masters, but yeah, close enough. Code masters, code weavers. Same. It starts with a cup. <laughs> it, 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 it's a wine port. It's code weavers. No. Clearly, man, but. Uh, we have Linux and Mac depots that have shown up. Now, I was looking at the game itself, and I noticed, I was like, hey, hey, wait a minute. Um, didn't this one use the DX12s? And, uh, oh, that was for... It nope. does. <laughs> so do you think that, oh, that's going to be kind of interesting? Uh, we have no idea who could possibly be bringing this title to Linux. None. Is it Aspire? I... Would be, that would involve yeah. them re releasing a Linux port uh, of another game. Fair Is point. it virtual uh, programming? <laughs> 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 that would involve them releasing any Linux ports at all. Do, do you know what? Is, I, is, is, it, <laughs> is, is it CD Projekt Red? They're great at making Linux games. If it's virtual programming, <laughs> I'll buy you a copy. Okay. <laughs> uh, sure, why not? What do we think about this picture? This one's uh, more in the lines of arcade racing. A little, little more, like, less of a simulation, but I mean, it's... Uh, it's about as arcade mm. racy as Grand Auto Squirt uh, mm. that we actually looked at a while back uh, was. Honestly, I would have preferred Dirt Rally 2. This, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm... A huge fan of the genre of racing, and I'm I am. glad that we have a strange abundance of it on Steam, from modern games, but all from the company that I'm just not a fan of the racing games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Grid, uh, Grid Auto Squirt wasn't 
terrible, but it, yeah, no, I much prefer Dirt Rally. Uh, we can, we, we can get you on like a Gran Turismo on like an RPCS3 or something, see how you like that. Yeah, I, I, I tried uh, Gran Turismo on the PS2. I played it on the PS1. It, that was, mm. yeah. It, I, I, I like mm. just psychotically arcade, re like uh, the distance. Mm. Yes. Just give Distance, me wings uh, and, grip. Yeah. <laughs> grip is Before fun. Speed world. Uh, <laughs> I mean, something that's fun. It's something that you don't really necessarily take seriously, but give me something vaguely resembling Newtonian based physics, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I vaguely I being the operative word yeah. there. <laughs> I think, I think they've kind of been doing that with Gran Turismo, but again, as someone who does not grok racing games, shrug emoji, right? Like, so, um, the juggernauts, ring, ring. The, the gaming masterminds that brought us overgrowth too, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was, I think it was just overgrowth. L L L yeah. Growth Luger 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 and Luger Luger too. And then overgrowth. Yes. Yeah. We're, the, not, the, we're, the, we're not going to get a sequel to the Titan of a game. Maybe the bunny we, rabbit have, boop, boop combat. It, and I was like, Oh God, this is bad. Um, <laughs> in, 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 the, in the next 10 years, maybe. The, hey, this one has an actual release date, though, so... It does. We've talked about this earlier in the show. You play the uh, disembodied uh, floating gun, and you're, yeah. I'm just making that up. I, it's my but, favorite character. <laughs> receiver it simulates every internal part of each firearm based on manufacturer schematics, gunsmithing resources. Yeah, you, okay, you play a floating gun, um, including how mm -hmm. to load. And you, do a, you walk around town, you do... You know normal things that floating guns do, and um, dun, dun, dun. start a floating gun family. I don't. Dun, 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 dun. It's got a release date. That's the point. April fourteenth. It it does. And it, uh, it, this is from Wolffire. So yeah, they're the ones behind Laguru and uh, Overgrowth. We're getting a Linux yeah. version. Uh yay! So yeah, the, they also no, had I mean, a Linux version of the first one. Which, uh, well, as Jordan it was, it will was, mention later on, it's a game jam game. Go on. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, so here, here's here's the thing though. Like, there's there's a reason abstraction exists in games, <laughs> and I'm curious if like if it's like realistic gun handling, if it actually makes it not fun because the actual like abstracted gunfighting that we're used to from like quakes and dooms and stuff like okay, that okay. is actually watch, like what is watch, required watch to make a fun with game. me one more time let, let, let's take a look at the glass physics here that are coming up and yeah you know what <laughs> I, I don't think we got a lot to worry about when it comes to like overloading us with realism on this no and my, actually my biggest problem with the first one that was basically just the build that they had for the game jam that they put out was uh yeah you can hit f1 to look at the controls it's like can i change them because you have like uh eight different keys that i need to press around wasd that i'd like to rebind to other keys so i can use the directional arrows and the game just went ah, <laughs> fuck you uh <laughs> so yeah can can i rebind keys now did you look at the game you're like you're not my mom <laughs> it's like okay that looks really interesting it's like active uh, accurately attempting to simulate the physics of the gun and everything just that not, that entails just like ju okay, just not the cool. glass no no oh, dude uh, that glass is next <laughs> it's about level. the guns not the glass uh, our, that, simp that, our, our simple brains just can't comprehend it's a it's a glitch in the on. matrix right. drag does look very very interesting though it does, and uh, I'm glad that they were putting it out on early access because besides interesting, it looks a bit slow. Um, I saw when they first put out uh, the announcement on Twitter that it was also coming to Linux, uh, I was at work, and I showed it to co-worker Dave, this uh, trailer video uh, that if you're watching the video version you're looking at right now, it's like... That looks a bit slow. Is it, Did they put the game in like slow motion, or is that... No, that 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 that's the speed that it seems to be going at all through the trailer. It's like eh, that's a bit slow. So yeah, it is coming to early access at some point in 2020, and I'm glad for that because I really do hope that they improve that uh, sense of speed. But it does look really neat, actually. The you know lacking sense of speed aside, it does look really really neat. And as a 
fan of the racing genre. I very much I, I am looking forward what, to. What, what Pedro's trying to convey here, the um, rotation of the tires are out of sync with what's going on with the movement of the Yes. <laughs> it's like, it looks like the tires are spinning really fast, but the cars are going really slow. If one could imagine if you had all-wheel drive and... Uh, Eight percent friction. You're doing it on ice. <laughs> yeah, that's, you that's were running you... like mm -hmm. hard plastic slicks. What do we need to run this? Um, I <laughs> three seems, four seems gigs of RAM, a four sixty ten gigs. Yeah, yeah. And online multiplayer combat racing PvP. They get my attention. The, um, the 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 PvP part's interesting because apparently what the 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 mechanic in this game is if you blow yourself up, then you're mm -hmm. out of the match. Period. So I think maybe that has to do with the speed as well to like make it make you do the mental calculus like is it worth it to ram this fucker or do i want to actually stay in the race and win i i, I think they just don't have the um timing down mm. on that yeah no th th I'm, again i'm totally glad that they're putting this out in early access first because i hope that that's fixed by the time the game proper comes out mm -hmm. unless they pull a distance and it takes six or seven years for it to come out <laughs> It'd be worth waiting on, man. You're what's wrong with yeah, Linux gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Linux versions, though, we have a um, yeah new, the, the, new entry. This one is actually using one of the new Steam Labs things. So I'm like, wait, why am I not taking to the store page? Oh, because this is the news hub. Interesting. All right, but uh, Shortest Trip to Earth, uh, they have a new release out, and it has a Linux version. So you can play it. And... It's like real-time, super customizable FTL. So you got my attention. Um, although I went, I went in the review section. A number of the reviews are complaining that the game doesn't really good, do a good job of like explaining its customization mechanics or implementing some of the subsystems. Steam, but at the same Steam, Valve, no one ever wants to watch the four people who fucking stream on your service. Stop. But it's Steam streaming's a real thing, you guys. Uh, I mean, so I mean, unless this, it's this Skyrim porn, there's a lot of people watching that. Okay, you know what? I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I got derailed there. Um, no, but like, so I don't know. This, this game looks interesting. I'd be, I'd be willing to like give it a look on a Thursday, cause like it, it look, it actually looks pretty cool, and I like, I like ship commander games. Okay, that's so. supposed to be a cat. This first picture is like, oh no, Pikachu <laughs> took the wrong stuff. Uh, uh, cat that, bunny thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 cat is looking to eat that penguin, and I want to see what happens. All right. I'm down. Uh, All right. Uh, what do we need to run this? Uh, just Linux OS. No, so. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, it, yes. it, 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 it's it's a 2D game, right? It'll it'll run on your toaster. Pretty cool, man. All right. That's yeah. going to do for our uh, steamy bits. Indeed. Coming up next, if you can't sell it, give it away for free. Yeah. That's Google's motto. Well, my eye has certainly beheld an eerie sight, uh, and it's got nothing to do with the fact that we're going to do the nudes, I mean the news, later. But, uh, no, first we need to thank you, because for some reason, if that intro wasn't explanation enough, you decided that it's it not. was a good idea to give us a budget. So how, Wait a minute, how, how do you walk out and tell the beautiful people who make this show possible and you just confuse the shit out of them and be like, yeah, give us money? Listen, we don't have enough budget to make yes. sense. <laughs> if, if you want That's us to make thing. sense, you're going to need to up our budget. And in order to do that, you got to head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Jordan, that's just going to reveal the same shit with a smoke machine. <laughs> I'm not seeing the problem here. We need more fair, smoke machines. we got to put that on the Amazon point. list. Fine. Yeah, head on, over, head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click that uh, smoke machine button mm -hmm. and... I don't know. We have multiple ways to get smoke machines. <laughs> there yeah, will it will be just, a smoke it'll just it'll just it, it delivers a smoke machine to us. <laughs> no, uh, mouse over the support button. We got many ways to support us. Sleeper pay. We got PayPal. We got a wish list. We got bitcoins. But the best way to do it is Patreon. Patreon's great because you get stuff in return for your patronage beyond just this wonderful content. It's that we not produce. just smoke machines with us. We do like to dance for our dinner, man. I mean, there's there's disco balls, there's laser lights, there's like flamethrowers. No, I wish there was laser smoke. Teespring doesn't there do flamethrowers, flame and it's the worst. But anyways, <laughs> Patreon, that's what we're talking about. Uh, become a Patreon. Any level gets you access to Discord, which is pretty cool, because if you're on our Discord, you can show up uh, an hour early at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time on Saturdays and get an extra full hour of Linux Gamecast goodness as we debug technical problems and reboot computers and... 
complain about our lives. It's good yes. stuff. <laughs> and you, you get a custom RSS feed and video when available. But at 250 a week, uh, you get access to the show notes. That's the cool stuff because you get to see the show before it's made. You get all the spoilers and you can even contribute, mm. which is good. We like that audience participation. It uh, is but brilliant. Yeah, there's some other good ways to support us too. We got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. No flamethrowers, Teespring. I'm so disappointed. Flamethrowers and booty shorts. That's what I want. I want flame and booty shorts. You know what? We fire. have normal, regular, ordinary <laughs> business apparel like the Use Me t-shirt. We have a beautiful Frank who's still doing social distancing. I know you can hear me, Frank. Um, <laughs> and a couple of, we have one with all of our faces on it, so we're equally there. So we can all suffer through that. And I, uh, I, I get to be in the cleavage. It's great. You, you do, man. Exactly. I don't know why I, I need to release the pictures the uh, that I stenciled those off of. Man, they're even more horrific. Oh man, maybe we do a full color version, like one of those. Oh god, shows. no! <laughs> yeah. Like like hyper realistic. Yeah, just nightmare fuel, man. It, oh. it, 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 it's it's like those bits in Red and Stimpy where it like zooms in and they just do like the super <laughs> detailed drawings. <laughs> and as always, if you want to end up on this glowy, fine, upstanding cannibal wall 3.0, I got to readjust that camera. Uh, that's anything that is purchased on the studio wish zone that enables cheat mode for us to have more toys to go horribly wrong with for your entertainment. That's how that works. Yes. And hope and hopefully make some more sense. A little bit. Not, not if Pedro has anything to say about it, though. We do get to make some cool educational videos that kind of help people out, though. Like, for that's, the next that's, that's, the next us, wherever they're at, hopefully, like, tomorrow. Like, yeah. Well, we'll what, what, when, 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 when the alien archaeologists show up and rough rummage through the ruins of the internet, they're like, oh, that's how you make podcasts. Oh, that, that explains <laughs> a lot. All right. Okay, that's where it began. It, it's like yeah. Bill and Ted, but with... Um, yeah, laser yeah, as yeah. it turns out, in the year 3025, we're really hot with the, you the know, sun oh. going like red giant a little early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Laser smoke. If, if only we didn't use all those smoke machines to <laughs> increase the global warming. I, I, don't, I don't know. All right. And, and enough of this nonsense. Let's talk about free nonsense. Free Stadia. Stadia, you know it. It's well, that overpriced controller that has a Wi-Fi thing built into it where you can uh, play <laughs> games as long as you don't need to move real fast at them. And, um, you know, this is directly from blog.google.google because that's a TDL now. We're facing some of the most challenging times. Da, 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 da. Anyone who signs up will get two free months of Stadia Pro with instant access to nine games, including Grid Destiny 2 and Thumper. Giggity. Uh, you can opt out of your subscription. Oh, Oh, wait a minute. Are you just being dicks? Do you do you want them credit digits in order to get a taste of this, Google? Because you're already oh, fucked up oh, the yeah. launch of this. So mm -hmm. might as well just uh, phone it in the rest of the way. If you want the two free months, you got to give them the digits. Well, I, I, you I mean, have here, to. Over here, here's I can't the, even do that. <laughs> here's the thing, though. They already have my credit card, right? So right. they don't even need to ask. <laughs> just, yeah, get you two free months. Here's We're gonna the keep thing. You, I, I guess I missed that because I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll like set this up and for science is like, hey, it might make a fun stream, you know? And I, I was in the beta test of like Stadia two years ago, whenever that was. Yeah, for and, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. And I, I got, I played the game and it's like, it, for what it was, it worked at the time. And uh, so I signed up through the browser and naturally it's like, oh, what? I'm using Chrome beta. Uh, like, Maybe I'll just use regular Chrome and it'll, I guess I missed the step where they asked for those digits because I just signed up and it's like, buy some shit, Vin. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. Apparently if you give them the digits, you get, uh, you get those games as mentioned. Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know. This, this is Google. This no is one's a good going to give you your digits to try an unproven, untested service that no one, you know. I, I, I mean, to Google's credit, this is the best time for a beta test because everyone's stuck at home. Every you're giving it away for free, so people are going to be using the service. Can I ask you it may like not a, be great. A legitimate but, question, though. Sure. Wouldn't you say the best time for a beta test for this was like a month and a half ago? When when it was time to beta test it. Listen, you can't no, no, expect no, 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 multi-billion no, no, no. dollar corporations with millions of dollars of market Jordan, research to make smart I'm, decisions. You're missing what I'm laying down. A month and a half ago, when all this self-isolation started not when we're mm -hmm. getting towards the supposed yeah. end I, i'm saying google uh, has managed to fumble fuck stadia in like <laughs> all throughout conception announcement delivery and we now yeah. we're in the you haven't killed it yet phase of stadia 
I think I think they can't kill it yet because like they got contracts with Bungie and EA and all this yes, shit. They're like, there's a lot of money. <laughs> there, 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 there's there is a lot of money tied up in Stadia right now, and I don't think Google could survive the legal onslaught that would occur. I mean, uh, unsolicited advice is always, but when you sign up and create an account, it's like here, would you? You need to give me something to try. I I don't care if it's Hello Kitty Island Adventure. But when you signed up just for a free account, regular, plain free, there's nothing. It's like, yeah, give us money if you want to use our mm-hmm. service. I'm like, I don't know if your service is going to work with my internet speeds, my computer, or my browser. Well, you can find out uh, after you give us some money and followed by, well, what if it doesn't work? Do I get a refund? <gasps> well, can I transfer my game to like Steam or something? Uh, you can download your save games. Oh, okay. What what happens when you close the service? Well, you know how that goes, fucker. Why even ask that? <laughs> yeah, um, we're Google. Oh, but yeah, on. no, I uh, I wait, just wait, tried wait, it. We, we don't we don't forget Google right Plus now. And all I'm getting is an error. The item that you were attempting to purchase could not be found. What was it? It was the freaking trial for Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Google bug report. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't even freaking work. <laughs> so I, I, I blame British Telecom. No, man. I don't know. It, it, once you're done um, smacking around Google, we can um, pull the heat train right up to the Atari station. Whoop, whoop, oh, yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So, um, VCS, uh, well, Xbox co-creator uh, Rob Wyatt sues Atari for failing to pay him for the design of the VCS console how you managed to license the design of okay, the Okay, where do we sit on the after... actual design of this console, though? Because I it lo- don't it hate it. It looks okay. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't yeah, own it, it, and I, I will very, mock you for uh, owning it. close one. to the original, and I guess Atari kind of owned that, but how a third party manages to claim ownership of that particular design when it's very clearly so much based on the original one. Dude, it's, beyond no, me. No, 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 it's a no, box no, no, you, with you, you, Fox uh, faux wood paneling on it. It was called the so, 70s. No, it's it's called, it's the, they're not ripping off Atari, they're ripping off the Thelio. They're ripping off System 76. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's really happening here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, no, apparently... You know, to add on to everything else in Atari, the current holders of the name Atari, let's be clear about this, uh, have decided that it would be a much wiser investment to set up a hotel rather than, you know, hotel finishing the console that they already... Chain, yes, hotel <laughs> chain. <laughs> You're thinking too small for such a grand organization. <laughs> the, well, the French holding company that owns the right. Yeah, the, yes. the, the, Artar, uh, the, yes, the Atari Hotel chain. See, but that's the thing. See, but but, but, but everything is wood no. paneled. Everything is wood paneled. Listen, it's shit like that is how I know all of this is a simulation, okay? <laughs> no, no, we it's are too living stu- in the it's, matrix. And it's, it's too stupid. stupid to be fake. It's too stupid to be fake. I, I don't believe it. So, <laughs> so here, here's the thing. Here, here's the here's my question. Steam boy. Though. The Steam boy. When the Steam boy is looking far more likely to come out and be, you know, a real boy, you know, you fucked it. You fucked well, it hard. Here, here's my question, though. Does Rob actually think that he's going to get some money out of it? Because I'm pretty sure whatever money they do have is, like, distributed across, like, a dozen Cayman and Swiss accounts right now. They're oh. not seeing a dime of that anymore. It's That's... definitely spread out. He'll, he'll never see it either. And probably shouldn't. I mean, I understandably, you know, when they did their fundraising, you know, to what what's the and, interest in this? And they're like, okay, we'll do this. And why are we talking about this begin with? Because... It's running Linux, allegedly, if it's yeah. ever going to get made. <laughs> Supposedly. I mean, I, th- th- we were told it was running Linux, but I don't think it's running anything but like a hollow oh, plastic shell at the moment. 100%. I mean, mm-hmm. this will probably absolutely, I saw this, I'm like, you know what? There are people who still think this is going to come out. And it's not. No. <laughs> no. That, 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 that money is gone. <laughs> It, 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 has been, it, is, it has been converted into a mountain of cocaine, and you're never going to see it again. Aw. Well, do we have any good news then? I mean, if you're if you're a big fan of Master of Orion, we do. Okay. Uh, yeah, because like if 
DOSBox or Free Orion isn't doing it for you these days. We got a, we got a project here. It's called Remnants of the Precursors. That is a they're basically they're basically just re-implementing the rule set for Master of Orion. And that's it. That's the project. Um, it's done in Java, so it will run on mm, your toaster. Not Java. well, mind. <laughs> not well, mind you. But at the very least, when your toast is done, you'll get like your map update embedded on the on the toast, so you can have a <laughs> snack and see see your Master of Orion updates. Um, but it should the the release beta should be out by the time you're listening to the recorded version of this. It's not quite out yet. Um, but yeah, if you just like Master of Orion, it is. That that's what it is, but but the serial numbers filed off. I, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. Couldn't uh, you deliver this in HTML5? You know what? You probably could, but this guy wanted to use Java. <laughs> okay, why not Flash? Someone wanted to justify that particular university degree, but okay. So, uh -huh. but here, here's 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 the thing though. <laughs> you can write stuff in Flash, and all Macromedia Flash does is it converts it into like HTML5 and WebGL and shit. So. <laughs> WebAssembly, uh, that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I didn't ever really play, I did not at all play the original game, but I know some people like that. And hey, man, Java, Java is at least something, you can absolutely hate it, but I mean, you're still going to be able to run it in 30 years. Yeah. I mean, it, there's still going to be some way to get it. At, 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 this, at this point, it's stable. So, mm. you know what? There, there, <laughs> There are worse choices for languages to write your game in. Let's be real at this point. The J JVM performance hit is nil because you're running a multi-gigahertz CPU. Like, who cares? This is true. So what's Cataclysm? Cataclysm is a uh, tile or text-based roguelike that takes place in a zombie apocalypse. Um, it's turn-based like most rogue games. Um, and it comes in two varieties, the Curses version and the Tiles version. And I tried both because I was curious to see, like, okay, how jank is the uh, Curses version compared to the Tiles version? They're actually very similar. Like, aside from, like, the at symbols and stuff, like, it's mm -hmm. the same game. So, you know, good good on you for, like, implementing that properly. Um, so, I mean, it's text-based survival horror. If you're stuck in a class or in a late-night deployment waiting for a deploy script to finish, this is a thing that you can run on your server. And, yep. You can you can play a game. So how old school is this? When when you say te this is not ASCII, this is text based, right? No, it's ASCII. Like you're oh. an at symbol and you're moving around the grid like a net hack. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, developer. I was trying to give you an excuse not to have any screenshots whatsoever either on your web zone <laughs> or your GitHub page. You can. There's an unofficial Reddit that actually has people <laughs> posted videos and some um, lewd videos so mind you uh, ask, ask you boobies mm. <laughs> at least one of them had a very suggestive thumbnail but Ooh. i did have to click through one of the videos just so i could see the what the game would look like because i right. honestly didn't feel like it uh but yeah no it it, it very much looks like your standard run-of-the-mill roguelike except the setting is a little bit different it's not your standard fantasy thing it's uh Zombie survival. Hmm. Yeah. I, I I mean, term, terminal games are nice just because, like, there there are times when you don't have a GPU or you're just kind of stuck yep. in a place. And Unfortunately, you, what Jordan just said is lies because now you have your mobile. That's true. Um, but I, I don't know. Some people like playing games in terminals. Oh, no. I 100% agree with you. It's like, I remember those days before I had a supercomputer that was, like, right there. I'm like, yep. 3D acceleration, I'm good. But then I'm just going to use that to browse the web. That's my new game. <laughs> yeah. Subreddit roulette. Pretty much, man. <laughs> Maybe you want to do some of the nonsense like we do, and you use OBS to stream your game, stream your show, stream your dog, stream your cat. Maybe stream some laser smoke, man. Uh, one tool that you might want to look into because you want to do, like, um, a two-CPU setup. You know, you want to have one for your gaming and a rig dedicated for your streaming. You first thought to do that, it's like, oh man, I gotta go buy some of those expensive capture cards and then bitches about how expensive those are, which are true. Don't do that at first. Something I want you to try is OBS NDI. You might know, if you've ever searched for it on the internet, uh, New Tech, the company that makes TriCaster, if you do a Google search, they did a blog about a post I made way back when, but uh, this will allow you to do it over with software, just over your standard gigabit ethernet, over your network, and it works really good. It's extremely low latency. 
and um, very low on the CPU usage. Now, I've talked about this before. The reason I'm bringing this up is the latest release is now compatible with version 25 of OBS, nice. and it's got the latest version of NDI 4.5. You're going to... And I common complaint I hear is like, well, it's too heavy on the system. These optiplexes that, granted, have been upgraded to four core, thanks, pity wise, thanks, my uh, non multi hyper threaded parts. Uh, what are they? I5 herpetrons? Yeah. yeah. 20, they're, they're Ivy Bridge I5s, I think. These things, these things with integrated graphics can do 720p streaming without dropping frames. So, yeah, I'm sure your gaming rig can uh, use NDI. Nope, you can, yeah, it'll work fine. Give that a look if you're looking uh, to do anything like that before you go just, you know, paying all them dollar bills. I just want to throw that out there. I tried to get Pager to use it one time. He told me to go die in a fire. Will it run on my <laughs> Xbox, though? Uh, if, if you leave me alone within the closet for a few minutes, it will. <laughs> it you runs said on that my last... Xbox, but uh, it's running a La full-on x86 PC in there. So <laughs> listen, listen, last time you did that, though, I got caught in a fist fight with Ben Franklin. I don't want to do that. Yeah, either. and I got <laughs> stitches in my groin, so hey, man. Yeah. Who really lost? Ben Franklin, that's, that's it. right. <laughs> Coming up next, we're throwing chairs at Vorion in space. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where this week we try not to asphyxiate in the cold depths of space. We're taking a look at Vorion. Uh, it's developed by Boxelware. It's done on a custom engine using C++, Lua, and OpenGL. Uh, you can pick it up for about 24 bucks US. What is it? Procedural co-op space sandbox where players can build their own spaceships out of dynamically scalable blocks, fight epic space battles, explore, mine, trade, wage wars, and build your own empire to save your galaxy from being torn apart by an unknown enemy. Uh, we've got to thank the devs for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. So let us begin. How does mm. this work on, on, on the Debians? Man, I got the new hotness, the new Debian. I'm not on Debian stale anymore, kids. I'm not. I'm on Debian space testing. Dildo. Mm, no, no, that that's next week. Uh, so, <laughs> <clears throat> as normal, I'm running kernel. Actually, I'm running the latest and greatest kernel right now. So it's five. What is it? Five three, five six, something like that. Five five six, I think. Five six. I could five, do name six, A right yeah. now. I'm just too lazy. <laughs> but uh, preempt Threadripper, nineteen twenty x thirty two gigajoules of RAM, NVIDIA twenty sixty. More than enough to play this monster, this juggernaut. Once you get it running. And it runs fine after that. Uh, 60 at 1080 at 4K 2160. And I do say get it running since I had to launch the game. Not once, not twice, but the third time after the update. Did fuck all, kids. Nothing. Just kept on hammering that play button and it eventually came up. That was the last one I was going to give it. I'm just going to uninstall it. I'm like, I'm not even going to finish playing this. But it did manage to launch in uh, 720p, which is... Interesting, interesting little window to pack and hunt at uh, UHD. The keyboard gerbil worked, no problem. As expected, happy to see that. Look at it's little Lego ship. Mine's all diseased looking. Uh, right out of the bat, in the tutorial, I hated the menu in this game. I, I knew I was in for some bullshit as soon as it said, hold left shift to activate the cursor. Like, oh, what? Because, like, seriously, you, you'll just have, like, this menu of, you know, spreadsheet up. And it's like, oh, there's more spreadsheet. Hold down left so you can click on other stuff and submenus. That can die in a fire. Um, it's just bad menu design. I'm not the only one who complained about that. And uh, I did have fun, though. Because you, you see, if you're watching the video version, you get to build a little Lego spaceship. And Pedro clearly spent more time than I did constructing the <laughs> Yorg cube. It was kind of like a Borg cube that's misspelled. You know, I put all the bits in the absolute wrong places with the wrong parts, but I ended up with something. I did. I ended up with something more akin to a disease shoebox than a spaceship. But you know what? Your cube could fly. Kind of. You know, it, uh, enough to where I was like, you know what? With a little bit of work, a little bit of forethought, I can bullshit my way over here. So I continued on my spacey journey. I stuck with it. I made it to a space dock. I picked up a contract to get some satellites. And I just kind of got lost from there, man. Uh, I agree with future Jordan. I kind of need some direction. <laughs> and how to progress, just a little hint. You know, it's like, go do this. This is like, boom, drop you in the middle of space. Space is big. It's like, have fun, figure out what to do. Fuck it. There's a lot of stuff to do. 
poor said fucko. Um, left to my own. I ended up mining some tunnels through some rocks and flying, trying to fly through them because it is an adventure to fly the Yorg cube. And um, trying to remember how to do anything in that overly complex menu that you, you're seeing right there. That, that's just the very, very top of it. There's a ton of shit to do in this game, though. But the learning curve, it's a bit too steep for my taste. Because at the end of the day, this comes across as completely promising. If I saw this in early access, and was like, okay, if you could refine this and put a better point on it, uh, I, I could see it, you know, with the sandbox and the shipbuilding mechanics. It's kind of fun. You do armor, weapons, and all that fun stuff. But, you know, I had to go look at the Steam reviews after I've written this and say, hey, I'm not alone. Um, these are just common complaints for the game. And, and apparently on Windows, it is a buggy nightmare. I didn't experience I mean, you might further into the game because there's crew management and all that other fun stuff. But I will say this. It's not overpriced. It's like 24 wet stinky caches. And if you're someone who stuck at home and you have a couple of hundred of hours to kill and you don't mind what could be described as a daunting learning curve just from that main menu is a bit of a comes across as maybe a refresher course for somebody who's got a thousand hours into the game versus never played this game before and games like yeah you'll figure it out no you won't i mean you might if you stick with it it could be a desert island game man like if you just need hundreds and hundreds of hours if you could dedicate that kind of time to it and I, I'm really, I really like your ship, Pedro. You spent some time on that. Good on you, buddy. Um, space penis. Yeah. But after an hour. Oh, man, I tried to avoid the space penis. Trust me. <laughs> you failed hour, to avoid the space penis. <laughs> it, this wasn't for me, man. Um, not in its current state. So, yeah. If you can feel anything I just said right there, um, I can't recommend picking it up right now. Just one chair. Uh, so I got to test this on uh, two systems. I tested it on the laptop, which is running Fedora 31, 64-bit with um, R7-2700U, um, which is the Ryzen mobile processor. It makes that box get hot, but it runs fine at, at 1080 there. Uh, on the i7-6700K with the GTX 1080, the, 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 the GTX 1080 Ti running Fedora 30, it also runs 60 at uh, UHD and in... Uh, 1080p. Although having to reset the game to change your graphical settings, not so hot. Uh, also, it got some load times. You on noticed it that, didn't you? Yeah, you want to change mm -hmm. something? Yep, close. Yep. There's there's no apply button. Yeah. Uh, the the load times are also pretty bad. Um, but you know what? Whatever. Uh, controls are uh, what you'd expect it to be. Walls to move, click to shoot. The shift menu thing is a bit of a curveball. I'll admit, but like I got I got used to it. It's. I, I, I just made sure to like, oh, what are all the keyboard shortcuts? These make sense. All right, now I know what to press and I don't have to hit shift ever. Um, and it looks like Space Minecraft. Hey, every, every time someone mentions Space Minecraft here, take a shot. Um, so for fun. Uh, so if you like the idea of something like EVE Online, but you don't want to necessarily deal with the community and a guild whose main strategy is to flood your system with numerous cheap ships to bog your computer down, this game might be for you because it's pretty flexible um, in the ways you want to play, which is really nice. This is what sandbox games need to do. They need to give you lots and lots of options. If you want to do like Minecrafty No Man's Sky stuff, you can do it. If you want to just build cool spaceships, you can do it. If you want to like adventure around a galaxy and progress the plot you can absolutely do that in any number of configurations as Pedro will go into um the problem i have with this is it's the same problem i have with uh, minecraft or terraria or any of these games when they give you all these options you get the option paralysis right like you're like what what do i do so i end up building my horrible monstrosity and i derp around the stars and i blow some ships up and i blow some i, I took a bunch of missions i blew up some asteroids and i'm like okay i'm kind of bored now but Here's where the saving grace might be, because there's multiplayer. It might be fun for a Thursday stream, but we probably need to set some ground rules where everyone has built their ship already, because otherwise it just turns into <laughs> the besieged streams. We're all, we're all just like, <laughs> okay, does this fall apart instantly? Cool. No, it fell apart instantly. All right. Um, but that might that might actually be the game changer, because if you have a bunch of people in, you can have space battles, you can set up corporations. There's like AI societies that you can interact with. It could be good fun. Uh, but for now, I got to give it two cheers. Yeah, 
and over here with the KDE on on the 3700X and the GTX 1080, now with one Display Port dead, uh, it launched out of the box. I didn't really have to do anything. It uh, defaulted to 144 FERPs at 2560 by 1440, which at first led me to believe, oh. Is this built in Unity? But no, 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 apparently it's a custom engine. Um, you can rebind all the keys and it uh, if you are in game and you hit F1, it actually gives you a screen with like all the keys that you should care about at that particular point. It changes if you're like flying around like I am right now or if you're in the uh, build mode. As far as technical achievements go, for me, this one was spot on and it's all done with a custom engine, so. Major kudos. Uh, for the fun, well, yeah, this is one of those games. It goes even deeper than you think it does mechanically. Uh, and in every respect, it's exactly, uh, there's exactly as much depth as you care to put into it. You don't want to build a ship, you can go to the workshop, download your own, that's fine. But if you want, the amount of customization that you're given with the build tool is so great it, that you can literally make anything you want. What you're looking on screen there was uh, about as much as I could care uh, because it's like, oh, it's a ship, it moves, it's reliable. I can put it in whatever direction I want in a reasonable amount of time, so I'm good. Uh, and the same goes for like all the other mechanics in the game. Do you want to have the one ship? or a whole fleet? Do you want to just keep exploring and doing missions, or do you want to create a whole new sector of your own making? It's actually kinda crazy just the amount of stuff that Euphorian gives you to do. And it is very much a space Minecraft take a shot. It's it's very well done game, and I'm going to give it four chairs, not because it's a game that, for me, it's whoa, so amazing, but I can see just how insane this could be if you actually like this game. So, yeah, no, if, if this looks anywhere near your thing, get it. All right, well, there you go. Three very different opinions, all of which what did are you, um, Did anybody fuck with the multiplayer? No, I didn't get a chance to. No. Uh, mm. I, th I think I might do that on Thursday, though, because I, I know Foxy has a copy of this game, mm -hmm. um, so he's available, so we might do I think something it's like something that. important to point out uh, with this is there is a drastic difference in system performance on what I'm saying. You might not be able to get away with playing it in Forever Alone single player. Because you have to generate your own server. And this is a common complaint. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, for us, no. But, you know, if, <laughs> for, if, you're, for, if you're on a laptop, yeah. Right. If you're if just on yeah. like your standard little laptop, you know, you got for school and whatnot, that could be the difference between it being playable versus not. You might just always be stuck playing online, which I didn't get a chance to play with it uh, online. But hmm, it, it, I'm kind of with Peter. It's like there's something there. It, just it needs it needs a little polish I, a little, by a little, I mean a lot. I I, I agree <laughs> with the, the with the desert island game assessment. Yeah, like if you have an infinite amount of time and like a laptop battery that won't drain, then this might be the game for you. Also, um, if you could just give us a mode to where we can build ships and have space besiege, I think we'd all be cool with that. I they have, they have a creative <laughs> mode, so you can just do that. <laughs> I mean, just straight up. I mean, give, give, I want points, maybe a goal. We want space rocket league with ships and lasers. That's we, it, pff, dude. No, we <laughs> space dicks versus space vaginas. Come on, that'd be amazing. All right, <laughs> coming up next, we have a lot of hate mail, so we gotta we gotta get through it. And if you'd like to put a bit of a bow on that. A hot bow. episode of a uh, Linux game cast that you just witnessed. Uh, you can put some hot sauce on it. It might taste a little bit better or not, but Hey, you can let us know about your opinions on the kinds of sauces that are hot or maybe not by going to LinuxGameCast.com, hitting the contact button, filling out the form, make sure LGC weekly is the show that you're sending your bit of hate mail to. Otherwise you might end up, being featured on the Wednesday show, what uh, Ven, Jill, and myself do on 
Wednesday. So if there's a connection careful. there, I can sniff it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll figure you like out one day, Mateus. <laughs> smells like jalapeno cornbread, man. <sighs> Mm. It's, it's Jordan's like looking on my, my brain is like, shutting. My brain is shutting down. I just want food. <laughs> Coming up first this week from John P. It's one hundred percent Linux. Uh, this was actually uh, posed to me on Twitter, to which I was like, "Hey, man, this is a good question. I want to share with friends and family and the community." He writes, "Hey, since I'm one hundred percent Linux on all of my computers, if I run Steam Windows games via Proton, does that count?" as selling out to Windows, or does it count as expanding my Linux options? Question mark. I'm only looking at, quote, free, unquote, games. No money used. I'm kind of confuzzled. Hmm. Now, I wrote back to uh, share my piece. I want uh, your feedback on this as well. Is for me, you know, th there's no Linux test, really. You know, no one's going to be like, ah, no, we got the results back, man. You're only 68% Linux. Get out of here. Put a, Get the blindfold on him. No, I, Old I, yellow. I, I, um, <laughs> I, I like the idea of, like, someone test your computer. I'm sorry, sir. You have Windows. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, please. It can't be. Your desktop has Linux. Spread to your mobile. Um, no, man. Um, Proton's a tool. Linux is a tool. Linux is an operating system. Linux... All operating systems, strangely, uh, have like their own little cults and religions and around them. You know, the Mac cult of Mac, and there's the Linux zealots, and yeah, right, exactly. It's not a cult. Well, it's still a not, cult. It's, I, it's, it's, it's not 50 a cult for a cult. like sixty percent, sixty-seven percent of the show. It's not a cult. Huh. It's, it's not a cult. It's it's third. more of a secret society. <laughs> there we go. Shh. But this is the way I look at it, man. I mean, that's a tool. I mean, if you want to play more games and Proton lets you play more games, you enjoy that. Um, I don't think anyone's going to take the piss on you, right? You can pay no, it's, 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 it's the same thing about like using emulators and stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. no one's going to give you guff for playing old Super Nintendo games on any sort of operating system, right? Um, I mean, if you if you if you subscribe to the lot of heretic purchases, there are already so many loopholes. You can just wait for games to go on sale in bundles and whatnot. And uh, uh, one of the already established loopholes is if you have a bl backlog of nope, games nope. already. Uh, I got the loophole, bitches. <laughs> you're, you're you're a loophole. Oh, full Your of mom's loops. a loophole. Hey, man, you said you weren't going to bring that up. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Shut up, David Carradine. <laughs> Dude, uh, Humble Monthly. That went from I had no interest in that whatsoever. You know, for like, I, 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 sorry, I love you, Matthew. You're great. Uh, your favorite little crumpet. But I just don't, I'm not going to run another operating system. That's too much work for me these days. But when Proton rolled out, I just have a play button. I'm like, yeah, all right. Send me some games every month. There might be one or two I want to play around with. Especially, you know, I have an excuse of like, there'll be something to play on Fridays as we play Return to Guess of Wolfenstein. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's my excuse. So go to hell. Plus, when did that come out? 2003? Four? <laughs> we need to figure out. Has a native Linux version. We need to figure out how to get some of the high risk texture packs on working on that. I was looking at uh -huh, that yeah. the other. Oh, man. People have went crazy on that thing. Uh, but no, man. Play, play what you want. Me personally, you know, I, I roll with that heretic purchase system, man. I mean, I try not to give money to developers that don't support Linux, not directly anyway. Yep. <laughs> That's the big one. It, it's like the, if the developer is or has shown any kind of uh, like anti-Linux behavior, Bethesda, uh, we probably shouldn't be throwing money at them because as Linux users, you kind of don't want to reward that behavior. Mind, mind you, I will freely admit to spending hundreds of dollars on Nintendo games because well, Nintendo's going to You didn't buy a Switch. Yeah, the Switch <laughs> runs <laughs> Linux, man. So It runs, B, oh, it runs BSD. It runs Linux, BSD, not BSD. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> I think the Switch not, does run straight Linux. No, it runs straight BSD. All right, they, they they got they got Linux running on it because ah. it's a Tegra tablet because you know, yeah. What, what was they it? Also the got Wii that ran Android Linux? running on. <laughs> I, th I think I think it was the Wii U that was running Linux. One of the two. We'll be on Google later if you're looking for us. Uh, right, <laughs> Pedro. What are your thoughts on that? 
Uh, I think it's BSD, but we should probably move on with uh, the hate mail and uh, yeah. the request. One yeah, of he, our most what, recent um, we, 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 we fucked up. We fucked up because in the shilling segment, we had two new Patreons mm -hmm. that we had to talk about. Mm -hmm. We didn't mention it. No, Libra Quest and Quiz. And Quiz. Libra Quest and Chris. Chris. Quiz? Chris quiz. and Chris oh, is Clutch. Quiz. I'm hunting wabbits. Quiz. It's Quiz. Uh, in any case, <laughs> uh, Libra Quest is actually asking uh, or thanking us i suppose because uh, we made some hardware recommendations hey everyone at lgc i just wanted to let you know that i've decided to purchase the rx 5700 xt with the ryzen 5 1600 cpu you didn't get the af that was a big one uh my gpu's pump had a crack and was no longer usable so i was asking you all what a good replacement would be you made it clear that i would need a new kernel to run the newer amd gpus yes after much consideration and budget upgrade searching, I decided on this pair. Thank you for the in or thanks for the insight and helping me decide how to go about replacing my current setup, which was uh, R9 Fury X and the 2200G overclocked. So, okay, no, that that is most certainly an upgrade because you're getting an extra two cores at least, but you didn't go with the AF. The Ryzen 5 1600 AF is, it's basically a 2600, which is really nice. What's the issue with the uh, 51600 though? I mean, what are you going to run into that, that can't run? Uh, it's not about not being able to There's run. There's your it's answer. About being You're able welcome. To run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like the performance delta between like Zen and Zen and the second gen Ryzen, pretty minor. It was like it, it was mostly TDP improvements. Um, Sixteen percent IPC improvements. Ish. But, yeah. But ish. ish. <laughs> I mean, it, it genuinely depends. I mean, because I have a first gen, uh, the Threadripper's first gen Ryzen, mm -hmm. and it uh, to give you an idea of the difference is it genuinely trades blows with the 2700x in single thread ipc mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah not much of a difference I, I mean i gotta i gotta say good good on you for going with the open sauce wombo combo mm -hmm. um yep. so yeah i mean yeah in, enjoy the 5700 xt let us know how it runs if hey man issues. i'm impressed somebody held on to what well, bought a the furry that yeah, the furry axe. You don't see a lot of people mm. who bought one of those. <laughs> Especially it, it, it's the nano who... furry. I, I kind of want one of those, man. <laughs> Just like that. That'd be fun. Yeah. To have. I mean, I mean, so, some people have tiny cases. I don't know. Mm. Up next, we got uh, Strider. Mathieu sent us some hate oh, mail. Shit. He said, "Like a champ. Name a game that used to run like a champ, but no longer does." And I'll up my Patreon by a dollar. I want to say. I want to say Vendetta: Curse of the Ravens Cry. Let me tell you, that never ran like anything. That ever, still ever, runs yeah. uh, yeah, as well as it ever launches. did. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's impervious to new CPUs and new GPUs. It can't be asked. Uh, th this is something that popped up in Mastodon. I was like, all right, I'll take the Pepsi challenge on this. So I uh, went out with this and uh, what was it? Sacred Gold? Sacred Gold is like, it uh, was my go-to. I, 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 dropped that I, bomb. I dropped that bomb in Mastodon and he's like, well, can't that be run just fine with wine? Uh, no, because as it turns out, there are a lot of textures that don't respect the Z levels, and the game is basically broken if you try to run it with wine. Well, here's the thing. You know, I wrote back and was like, I, I wasn't aware wine could run Linux ex executables. It's like, no, no, no. You see, uh, what I oh. meant, what I meant is not what not what I said. Quit, quit trying to judge me. By that was the first rook. scooch now, of the yeah. goalposts. Now, 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 you say that. <laughs> But have they gotten the WSL <laughs> working under Wine so that you can run Windows uh, Linux apps in your Windows apps under Linux? Uh, the, the, the container for that better be called Yo Dogs, um, uh, dude. <laughs> I, I I went ahead and dropped the bomb because this, this this conversation moved over to Discord. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think the one good example of that, thanks Gary, is Rust because of EAC. Rust. Mm -hmm. And you can keep your dollar. Dude. Rust it, now straight up doesn't run. <laughs> no. womp, womp. Jordan, do you, do you have any uh, top contenders for that? I can't. None. I, I I thought about it for a minute. None that I can really think of. But mm. like most most of the games I play aren't like graphical juggernauts and run pretty consistently. So 
Well, I guess that's going to do it. Uh, nothing left to do, but maybe, maybe we can pull the train in without it derailing again, right? No. It's both promises Cue the there, music. Mr. Stone. <laughs> you can always find us 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time, where we go live on twitch.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Watch us after the fact. Uh, download the podcast. I think we have a YouTube channel. You can watch a video there uh, where we're doing the things and the video stuffs because video. That's kind of brilliant. You want to get a hold of me? I'm just uh, at Vin Stone on Twitter or just at Vin at Mast com. Hit me there. I will usually say hello back. Just not that nice. I'm Jordan Swung. I don't run as fast as I used to under Linux. And you can find me slowly running into a wall, colliding into it at uh, The Burning Fool on Twitter or at Frojo on mass.linuxgamecast.com. Splat. The fucking Cydia still doesn't work. Um, Stop playing I Destiny. Am <laughs> and you can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter. That's it. That, that... That's where you can find me. I, or, or, I, I what, am technically on Mastodon, but I don't fucking go what, there. What, 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 what's, so, what's your Stadia it, handle if we want to play Destiny with you? Not accounted for. All right, Adam, Adam on Stadia, do it. It, it is. I, I, here's the one thing I was impressed about. We we were only in an RTC W coupe for like 20 seconds, and Pedro already had his like fucked up backwards high lit. Like, hey, look, I'm an edgy 12 year old. It was unaccounted in red, and uh, the number four yep, in blue. Yep. Like this goddamn mouse. Yep. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> That's exactly what I was trying to get across. I mean, I'm, I mean edgy 14-year-olds are our target demographic, right? <laughs> they're, the, they're the ones whose parents have credit cards, right? So this the That may or may not have been a bit of a borrow from the old um, Quake 3 days, but... Stand the fires, <laughs> beautiful people. We'll see you send, next week. Send us your parents' stop. credit card. Bye. <laughs> Five dudes.